Jules and Jim, is a 1962 French new wave romantic drama film, directed, produced and written by Fran A. Tilda Sexuoise Truffaut. Set around the time of World War I, it describes a tragic love triangle involving French bohemian Jim, Henrisa, his shy Austrian friend Jules, Oscar Werner, and Jules's girlfriend and later wife Catherine, Jeanne Moreau. The film is based on Henri Pierre Roche A. Tilda copyright S. 1953 semi-autobiographical novel describing his relationship with young writer Franz Hessel and Helen Grund, whom Hessel married. Truffaut came across the book in the mid-1950s while browsing through some second-hand books at a shop along the Seine in Paris. He later befriended the elderly Roche A. Tilda copyright, who had published his first novel at the age of 74. The author approved of the young director's interest to adapt his work to another medium. The film won the 1962 Grand Prix of French Film Prizes, the 8 Tilde Toy Isle Crystal, and Jeanne Moreau won that year's prize for Best Actress. The film ranked 46 in Empire Magazine's The 100 Best Films of World Cinema in 2010. The soundtrack by Georges D. Leroux was named as one of the 10 best soundtracks by Time Magazine in its all-time 100 movies list. Plot. The film is set before, during, and after the Great War in several different parts of France. Austria, and Germany. Jules, Oscar Werner, is a shy writer from Austria who forges a friendship with the more extroverted Frenchman, Jim, on Risa. They share an interest in the world of the arts and the bohemian lifestyle. At a slideshow, they become entranced with the bust of a goddess and her serene smile and travel to see the ancient statue on an island in the Adriatic Sea. After encounters with several women, they meet the free-spirited, capricious Catherine, Jeanne Moreau, a doppelgay tilde current singer for the statue of the serene smile. The three hang out together. Although she begins a relationship with Jules, both men are affected by her presence and her attitude toward life. Jim continues to be involved with Gilberty, usually seeing her apart from the others. A few days before war is declared, Jules and Catherine move to Austria to get married. Both men served during the war, on opposing sides each fears throughout the conflict the potential for facing the other or learning that he might have killed his friend. After the wartime separation, Jim visits, and later stays with, Jules and Catherine in their house in the Black Forest. Jules and Catherine by then have a young daughter, Say by Jules confides the tensions in their marriage. He tells Jim that Catherine torments and punishes him at times with numerous affairs, and she once left him and Sabine for six months. She flirts with and attempts to seduce Jim, who has never forgotten her. Jules, desperate that Catherine might leave him forever, gives his blessing for Jim to marry Catherine so that he may continue to visit them and see her for a while. The three adults live happily with Sabine in the same chalet in Austria, until tensions between Jim and Catherine arise because of their inability to have a child. Jim leaves Catherine and returns to Paris. After several exchanges of letters between Catherine and Jim, they resolve to reunite when she learns that she is pregnant. The reunion does not occur after Jules writes to tell Jim that Catherine suffered a miscarriage. After a time, Jim runs into Jules in Paris. He learns that Jules and Catherine have returned to France. Catherine tries to win Jim back, but he rebuffs her, saying he is going to marry Gilberty. Furious, she pulls a gun on him, but he wrestles it away and flees. He later encounters Jules and Catherine in a famous, at that time, movie theater, the Studio des Ursulines. The three of them stop at an outdoor cafe. Catherine asks Jim to get into her car, saying she has something to tell him. She asks Jules to watch them and drives the car off or damaged bridge into the river, killing herself and Jim. Jules is left to bury the ashes of his friends in the P.A. Tilda Diarasis Relaques Cemetery Columbarium if the trio had their way. Catherine's ashes would have been scattered in the wind from a hilltop, but at the time it wasn't legal.